All right, so I want to start things off by answering uh, a pretty simple but commonly asked question, which is, what is CVO? What is customer value optimization, and how does it differ from you know, things like conversion rate optimization and other forms of optimization? And, and to kind of answer this question, I'm going to start with somewhat of a shocking statement, right? And that's this. Just because you know your product or service is great, just because you know your prospects really need it. And this is big, right? How often have we said, ooh, I know my product is great. I know people need it. Well, just because you know it's great, just because you know that there's a market for it, just because you know that people need it, well, that doesn't mean they know that they need it, right? At least not yet, right? And this is the job of marketing. This is what we have to do, is we have to overcome this. Yes, we have something that's great. Yes, they need it. Yes, there's a market for it, but they don't know they need it. And even if they do, they don't necessarily want it from you, at least not yet. So this is the primary hurdle that we as marketers and business owners most must overcome. And the CVO growth plan, customer value optimization as a strategy, it works because it follows the structure and sequence of normal, healthy human relationships. Normal, healthy human relationships. Structure and sequence. Keep these words in mind, in particular structure and sequence. What is the ordinary structure of a healthy, normal human relationship? For example, how do we find and, and meet and eventually, you know, hopefully marry the person that we love, the person that we're meant to be with, right? We kind of know there's a path, there's a process to that, right? We know how these things work. Science has studied it. If you want to kind of an interesting aside, an interesting tangent, Google the 12 stages of intimacy, right? I'm not going to go over it here. It's kind of gets a little heady, but if you want a little extra reading, feel free to do that. The 12 stages of intimacy. We know, right? Scientists know the, the structure and the sequence of intimacy, of human relationships. How do we go from strangers to ultimately sharing one of, one, in one of those lives in the most intimate way possible? We know that there's a sequence and a structure for this that works in human relationships, but we forget that business and marketing is simply another type of human relationship. We think that it's different, and that's the problem. And what we're doing with customer value optimization is we're acknowledging this. We're acknowledging that business, that marketing is just another form of human relationship. So unfortunately, that's not what most do. In fact, this is what most marketers are doing. They're being creepy, right? They're being really creepy with our customers. There's like this girl right here. So for our first date, I was thinking, you know, we could figure out the names for our children. They're proposing marriage on a first date. This is what most marketers are doing. And if you've you know, walked into many stores or if you've gone to a lot of websites, that's what they're doing. You show up on the homepage and it's sell, 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 sell. You know, buy, 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 buy from us, give us money. Come on, come on, come on. That's like walking up to somebody in a bar and saying, hi, nice to meet you. Want to get married or want to go back to my place. It's just creepy. The reason this is funny and the reason it's a meme that's gone all over the internet is because we acknowledge this isn't normal. This is kind of creepy and yet this is how many of us are approaching business and marketing. Not all of us though. Some of us are approaching it more like this guy, right? Others have grossly overcompensated for the creepiness factor, for the huckster, for the salesman factor, and they're instead the pathetic guy who's locked in the friend zone. They're the people who are always bringing flowers and candy and, oh, I got you this, and oh, you look so pretty, and how you doing? And, and, and only every now and then they say, by the way, if you'd maybe like to give me money, I guess I'd take it maybe, kind of. But if you don't want to, that's totally cool too. Right? If you don't, ah. They're constantly selling from their heels, and this is what a lot of the content marketers are out there doing. Don't get me wrong, I love content marketing. We have a certification course that's all about content marketing. I think content marketing is genius. It's essential these days. But what you hear touted from a lot of the content marketers, a lot of the social media uh, marketers out there, is that don't sell. Just give and give and give and give and give, and eventually they will buy. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't work. It sounds good. It sounds good. It's the type of thing where if I were to walk out on a stage and deliver that message, look, you don't have to sell anymore. Good news. You don't have to sell anymore. Just walk out on a stage, you know, or just go, go back to your, you know, business and just give and give and give and give and give. And eventually they'll be so overwhelmed by your generosity that, that they will in turn buy from you. That's only never how it works. And we know this because it's not how it works with ordinary human relationships. If all you do is give and give and give and you never say, hey, let's go out sometime, right? 
then they're never going to go out with you. In fact, they're going to think that you're kind of pathetic. You're the pathetic guy who's like, oh, I wish I had a girlfriend. I'm such a nice guy. Why is she always going out with the, with the jerks like that? It's because you're the pathetic guy. You're this dude. You're locked in friend zone. And many of us today, again, it's, I would argue that it's better than this, right? At least you're not creepy. It's better than this, but it still isn't getting the job done. And this is the big problem with the way that most of us are approaching marketing. This is a big problem with the way most of us are approaching business growth. We vacillate between these two extremes, between creepy and pathetic, between pervy and prudish. And as we know from normal, healthy, ordinary relationships, it's neither, right? It's neither. It's something in between. It's a sequence and a structure and a proportion, and we're going to go over that right now because this is exactly what our methodology is all about. Scientists have figured out that there are 12 stages to human intimacy. We've broken it down in the business world to five, okay? Five stages. There's the lead magnet, the tripwire, the core offer, the profit maximizer, and the return path. Or more simply put, what's your number? Can I call you sometime? That's kind of like a lead magnet. Tripwire, hey, want to get some coffee? You know, can I buy you a drink? Core offer, I'd like to take you to dinner. Let's go out on a real date. Profit maximizer, will you marry me? And then the return path, flowers, date night, things like that. Now, important question, especially if you're married, do flowers and date nights stop when you get married? Of course not. Right? Not if you're doing it right. And that's why we're going to talk about when you get to the return path. It's just as important, if not more important, to have a return path for your customers if you're best buyers than it is for your prospects. But we'll get to all that. But the point is, this is the structure. All right? This is the structure of human relationships, and it's also the structure of business relationships. And what we're doing as a part of the customer value optimization process is we're doing just that. We are optimizing all five of these phases. Every single one of them, the lead magnet, the tripwire, the core offer, the profit maximizer, and the return path, we know that if we optimize each and every one of these phases, that that's the key to maximizing customer values. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about as we move throughout this particular training. So now that you understand the basic concept, the, the methodology that, that undergirds all this stuff, I want to show you the actual formula that we're going to be using as we move through and optimize your customer values.